Can you hear me, Angelo? Yeah, you're coming through loud and clear, Michael. All right. And Kevin, are you ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm like, I hear your voice. I'm like, I'm not I even ready, know. but okay. I can't, I, I can't, I, for some reason on my side, uh, everything was shut down. I don't know what's going on. Wow. Um, Sorry. Um, so much so, so, all right. Yeah, so, Michael, you, right know, now. You, know, you, you know what will make you feel better? Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it the right way. Yes. How about this? I don't even have my beer. So like, uh, oh. so w what I'm going to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to, uh, uh, ha let, let's peek behind the curtain a little bit. All right. So this is what we would do before the show. Hey, how you doing, Angelo? How you oh, doing, Kevin? I wouldn't Kevin? be here yet, though. <laughs> We're behind the curtain. I don't arrive till literally the countdown starts. That's really All right. behind the curtain. All right. So let's, let's do this. Let's do it from the top. Right. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 54 for May 11th, 2021. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, I'd appreciate if you turn on uh, those notifications and please subscribe. Uh, some housekeeping before we start. Super thank you. To Patreon super supporter Cowboy Jack Durango. I see him in the comments. Yeah, he can. Wait a minute. He's now the, the BBB's George Brett. Uh, a perfect uh, double taper for you uh, over there, Jack. You're, yeah, you're amazing. Yeah, we introduced um, Cowboy Jack to the George Brett story. Angela, have you seen that? What? Oh, he doesn't know about the George Brett story. You, okay. have, you have some homework before next week. Yeah, yeah, so we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely uh, get we him. We can't up play it here. It's not safe for work or for our or for our show. Thank you to our Patreon super, super supporter story. Rachel Elnar for her contribution to the beer baseball blog and the power hitter level. Um, I don't have uh, Scott Lawson here. Boy, I am a mess. So definitely uh, check out uh, Scott Lost uh, at accidentalaliens.com. Um, again, we appreciate all of our Patreon supporters. If you would like to be a Patreon supporter and help our efforts here at the beer baseball blog check out our patreon page it is patreon.com forward slash beer baseball we also have an etsy store where you can support us by buying stickers buttons beer coasters on our etsy page uh search beer baseball here's a lineup card for today batting leadoff he is the vp of content development at the beer baseball blog angelo trinidad welcome Hey, Michael. Hey, Kevin. Hey, everyone. For, uh, thanks for tuning in. Episode 54. Can you believe it? Uh, I can't. Um, I feel like uh, we were just doing our pilot episode. Uh, but thank you guys for your continued support of uh, truly our passion project. And hope you guys had an opportunity to check out Monday Night Rip last night on uh, the Beer Baseball Blog Facebook page. Yeah, that's exciting. Thank you so much for doing that. That's something that uh, I've wanted to uh incorporate i wanted to do more on our facebook page we have people obviously on facebook that aren't so much on youtube and you know actually our twitter following is is great and we have a great following there as well um but yeah so thank you for doing that we definitely want to grow that and uh and do more with that and so thank you again for doing that next he is the field correspondent and senior research analyst for the beer baseball blog kevin lyon welcome great to be here wait senior are you saying I'm old? Uh, yeah, well, we're all, I think we're all senior, except for Angela. Okay, he's, well, that's fair. Because, even, you know, I was thinking this is episode 54. You know, you're about half of my age now. We're, maybe if, I, <laughs> if I'm still alive in another 54 weeks, maybe we'll finally reach my age. 1954, yes. good year. Yes. Good year. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Angela's a kid. I mean, let's look at his shirt. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the True. kid. True. <laughs> Well, everyone, I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, I've only seen it in some circles. And thanks to uh, Kevin uh, reminding me, it is uh, American Craft Beer Week. Um, and depending on where you see the, the signage, it either started on May 11th or May 10th. Um, I've actually seen it uh, uh, both, um, yeah. Kevin. So uh, it's uh, something happened where, where there's a little snafu. I would imagine it started on on uh, monday yes. monday the 10th because otherwise it would have uh started yeah. on a tuesday and end on like a 
Monday. It's because they're Monday. thinking of the beer baseball blog. Let's be honest. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. They yes. want to make sure they start it with us. We're, we're kicking it off proper. <laughs> yes. A day late. And um, it can, uh, American Craft Beer Week is an annual springtime salute to local beer uh, and also local breweries. Um, it's an opportunity to honor hometown gathering places that give a uh, give the communities uh, their unique flavor. Um, local beer is better, they say. So it's like that's what we're all about. And uh, we, we're always asked all the time, you know, the difference between macro beers and, and craft beer and, you know, and craft breweries, micro breweries. Um, all you have to do if you're looking, if you're at, uh, you know, anywhere that you're buying beer, if you see the independent um, uh, little signifier, uh, yeah, there should be a signifier right there. Mine. I see Look it. for that on the can. And that will, um, that is, uh, you know, yeah, there you go. So there whenever is. you see that symbol, you are getting a uh, craft beer. Um, and, uh, well, you're also, you're supporting the actual independent craft beer scene. So, um, so what defines a craft brewer? Um, so the, the Brewers Association defines American craft brewer as a small and independent uh, brewer. So small definition is annual production of of uh, 6 million barrels of beer or less, approximately 3% of the U.S. annual sales. Uh, beer production is attributed to a brewer according to the rules of alternating proprietorships. Um, so it can get pretty, you know, there's, there's a lot of minutia here. But um, the independent definition is less than 25% of the craft brewery is owned or controlled uh, by a beverage alcohol industry member, which is not itself a craft brewer. So, I mean, there's there's the macro breweries like, you know, the bigger ones like Budweiser, and they can have like a majority of a brewery, um, but they can also be a minority contributor as well. So uh, there's a kind of like a fine line. But anyway, but if you look for the symbol, you're going to actually get a, a craft beer. So, um, yeah, it's definitely uh, something to look for. And, and you guys had it right on your beer. So uh, with that being said... We're going to see what we're drinking tonight. And uh, while I get my beer, Angela, I'm going to let you uh, go first. Sure. So in the spirit of American Craft Beer Week, I've uh, supported a local brewery out of Redlands, California, uh, called Hangar 24, who's no stranger to uh, to our show. I've drank a few of their beers on here. Um, and uh, uh, Daniel from Halo Haven also has as well. Today I'll be trying, and I'm trying, the Pacific Coast Hazy IPA. Um, this one surprisingly is 4.8 ABV, uh, which is surprisingly low for um, for uh, an IPA uh, with no IBU listed. Yeah, I think um, you'd think it'd be a session with it being that low. That's interesting. Right, but it's a uh, it's really really good. Um, it's described as uh, uh, full of West Coast hops, easy on the palate, and packed with flavor. Uh, cheers to wherever the PCH takes you. So obviously, a play on uh, Pacific Coast Highway, PCH, but uh, this one's actually pretty good. Uh, very crisp, very refreshing, uh, very light as well. So um, I'm definitely, um, uh, I can definitely see why it's only 4.8, uh, but pretty good. And, and I would say uh, this is arguably the biggest uh, craft brewer out, out in the Inland Empire area. For those For sure. who know, Inland Empire would be a little uh, like the area about, you know, 30, 40 minutes east of LA. Um, I first became aware of them because they would actually be at the craft brewery, the craft brewery that would be at games in Inland Empire 66ers, which is in San Bernardino, Rancho Cucamonga, Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, Lake Elsinore Storm, all those teams in the area would have beers by, you know, by Hangar 24. And that's why I first saw them back about now almost a decade ago, like 2012 or so. I said they were around since yeah. 2008. And and I, think they have Redlands, a, I think they have a they have one of their buildings. They have a restaurant. I'd love to be able to have an opportunity to go out there. The, yeah, the original location that I've been there, it's in Redlands. And it's actually like right across the street from the Redlands Airport. So that was kind of fun. I literally went there on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> they were actually on a Thanksgiving. I was on my way to like Palm Springs, hanging out with family. So I'm like, perfect. Let's go here. And now they actually have a location in Irvine. Oh, do they really? Yes, that it opened up uh, sometime last year. Oh, and they've been open. No problems. They have bands in the outdoor area. I've heard it's really nice. I, I believe it's on there. like more the the four hundred five freeway side yeah. of Irvine. I'll have to go check it out. Absolutely. And if you ever go to the Empire, one last thing on Hangar, and I think we mentioned it before, on the third base side is an actual Hangar boot Hangar area where you can get your beers, and there's some benches there you can just sit down and watch the game. 
nice little area. You just got to hope they don't close it up early because that's what happened to us last time. <laughs> they right. closed the area like after the fourth inning. We're like, I was supposed to get our good beer. <laughs> that's right. That's, that, that made no sense whatsoever. Um, uh, Kevin. Oh, yeah. yeah. I gave that history lessons. So now um, I – you said drink local. I, I am local here. This is another brewery from Anaheim, California called Brewery X. It's a it's not walking distance. It's a big, gigantic space. There's an area of Anaheim, like where I live is more like the downtown central area by Disneyland. If you go about 10, 15 minutes northeast, there's a whole area where there's like six or seven breweries and there's some great stuff over there. Like Bottle Logic is the most well-known one. But Brewery X has made some traction. They have a huge, huge area of space. And they must make a lot of beers because now they're starting to become readily available at your Total Wines, Trader Joe's, stuff like that. Like, that's where I got this one. And it's called the NAR. It's 8.1% double hazy IPA with Nelson and Mosaic Ops. So let's see how this is. It definitely smells hoppy. I don't know if I see an IBU list, but I imagine it's going to be pretty high with this contents here. Yeah, I saw that there wasn't uh, an IBU, but eight point one. I mean, it's it's definitely got to be up there. Yeah, it, it yeah, I yeah I don't see it on the candy, but yeah, that's pretty that's pretty strong. Yeah, but I like it. it. You know, it's my kind of beer, so I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah, and and uh, you know, we've always, uh, in fact, uh, we kind of got diverted uh, when we were yep. gonna go to Brewery X the last time, and uh, just because we felt like we owed it to, you know, try uh, at least looking at it because it was such a big facility. We're like, what is this place that that it's it's so huge? I mean, we I have was to, blown we have to away because I never even heard of it until they opened. If you go, it it like I said, it's gigantic. Looks like a gigantic warehouse or some yeah. sorts, and in the back. You actually have to go park and you walk around the back to go in. And at mm -hmm. the back, there's like an outdoor patio. When you first go inside, there's like, this almost like an old, old like diner kind of setup where you can get beers. And then you go into another room where you it's like a regular looks inside kind of place brewery. And then you can go to another room, which is a big space where you can sit several hundred people. And the time I went inside, they actually had a band playing. And it was like a Sunday afternoon at like five. So once it's fully opening, you know, hopefully they're going to be rocking and enrolled me because i'm like a lot of money must have went into that place yeah yeah i said it looked like a costco like yeah a, <laughs> like, yeah, a, like, type it's, of like it's like the size of a costco yeah. honestly yeah so uh definitely definitely a good one there um yeah, no, my no, beer no, which i have not opened yet is the Ooh. earthquake Ooh. uh weather hazy ipa from pacific plate brewing uh actually in monrovia so uh close to uh proximity of where i am yeah. uh creamy and sl slightly sweet Double dry hopped with Citra and El Dorado hops. I'm gonna pour that in there. I didn't get oh, to do Oh yeah, there's ASMR. your ASMR. That's ASMR right there. Oh there you go. yeah. At least my microphone works. Uh, the, <laughs> everything else is going kablooey at me in the background. Um, oh. So uh, I guess yeah, there's a, a, a really great aroma. So uh, actually, El Dorado and Citra hops with notes of stone fruit, grapefruit, and mango. So nice, sounds good. Seven point like, three like ABV. I, I, I don't like the name. I don't. I don't <laughs> like it either. Earthquake weather. To either. It, makes, it makes us nervous, you know. So, Do we have to so, explain earthquake weather? Do we have to explain what that means? <laughs> it's pretty much every day here. So like, it, it, it's funny because yeah. uh, whenever there's earthquakes here in California, we're just like, uh, I guess there was one recently and they're just like, oh, you know, it's like this, I guess it was off like, uh, I think one of the Hermosa beach, maybe, uh, kind of close so. to that. Yeah. 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 I knew. yeah. It was like a three. Yeah. A three. Right. And so we're just like, well, I didn't feel it. It didn't happen. So, right. uh, there yeah. you go. That, that's the way we are here in California. <laughs> and, and I'm guessing this is like an urban legend almost at this point. Cause it was like, it was probably at least one time, maybe two times where in California, it'll be like really nice, like the 60s or whatever, maybe low 70s. And all of a sudden, for like three, four days straight, it'll be like 85 to 90 degrees. And I'm guessing a big earthquake must have happened once during one of those stretches. Because amongst other California, that happens going, uh oh, it's earthquake weather. Right, right. Is that yeah. that they didn't outside of California, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, it's one of those things, like, for instance, I, I heard somebody um, on one of my work calls talking about, uh, oh, yeah, like, you know, we're having hurricane weather, we're having this, we're having that. And uh, they're like, oh, I want to move out to California where, uh, you know, where it's nice and serene. I'm just like, eh, if you like fires, if you like uh, earthquakes, if you like yeah. uh, mudslides. If you like uh, <laughs> high rent, 
<laughs> like I ran. If you can get in while people are coming out, uh, yeah, yeah, great. Um, Man, that's just, yeah. <laughs> um but anyway uh cheers to everyone thank you so much Yay. for joining tonight oh yeah I, oh boy this is gonna 54 be and counting yeah i, I want to make a mention of pacific plate real yes, quick it, it was one of the first breweries that i i kind of came across that was super super small in fact if you go to the monrovia one they actually um started another one i believe in in glendale but it's no longer there but uh pacific plate uh had um it's kind of when I started finding out about the kind of a, a, the uh, the mixing of beer. So, like, for instance, they had a Orjata Stout. And it was the first time I'd ever heard of anything. If you're not uh, familiar wow. with Orjata, it was, it's like a rice – it's a Mexican, like, rice drink. And and so they, they mixed it into a stout. And I, I just looked recently, and they had a very – you're going to get a kick out of this, Kevin. They actually have an Armenian coffee stout. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah. So you talk about uh, if 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 you're familiar with uh, with Turkish coffee or, or Armenian coffee, um, it is uh, it's very dense and and uh, there's a high it's 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 like it's like uh, a a latte but but like times ten you know so mm -hmm. um, it it's really How, uh, did you try it? I have not tried it. I've only here? seen it on the website. Yeah, it was oh, uh, one of those okay. that I haven't had a chance. And those are the ones that I would just like do in the tasters. And, you know, I yeah. wouldn't have like a big one right away. Yeah, at uh, least I, now we're to the point where you can kind of start doing that again if you're able to get out and go places, you know. Right, right. Uh, while we have the chance, I wanted to uh, go through the chat. Thank you, everyone, for uh, uh, sticking around uh, and uh, watching. Uh, we, we have, I'm, having, I'm having a lot of technical troubles, which I, I promise I will not have next week. Uh, a lot of stuff is changing, but I wanted to uh, say hello to If Sports Cars. Thank you hey. for joining again. What's yeah, up, Ian? Bubble yeah, Pug. Uh, thank you so much. We talked yeah. about uh, Cowboy Jack Durango always uh, in the chat. Daily Sports Talk. Hey, um, here. All right. Yeah, uh, David's in the chat. Um, actually, Bubble Pug. Uh, uh, I think she went to a uh, Brewers game, right? Yeah. Yeah, least, yeah. Uh, uh, recently. That's pretty cool. Actually, uh, the Brewers actually went up to 50% today, I think. Yeah. And Nelly Sports uh, Talk told me he's going to be opening day pitcher uh, at his high school this week. Oh, that's cool. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Get ready. Good luck that's to you. Cool. Chad <laughs> M., uh, I think he got you your uh, your glass there, Kevin. Am I correct? Chad there M., yep. Yep. Thanks, Chad. Uh, and uh, let's see who else is here. Oh. Jody Moss, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I, actually, a home brewer, Jody Moss. All right. She actually uh, does uh, uh, home brewing, which, which I'm very uh, jealous of. I wish I had the time to do that. Uh, Ed Brown is here. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for joining tonight. All right. So um, let's get to it. Here we go. This is uh, this day in baseball history for May 11th. So let's do it. May 11th, 1923, establishing several Pacific Coast League marks. Pete Schneider, uh, no relation to Tom Schneider, uh, hits five home runs and a double, driving in 14 runs as the Vernon Tigers route the Salt Lake City Bees 35 to 11. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> is that I Vernon, don't... California? It is <laughs> Vernon, <laughs> California. I'm like, I guess that was a, an actual bigger town back then. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Did I, did I, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> He's you can still hear back. me. You can still hear me, right? Yep. Yes. I can we still can. hear you, sir. All right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why this thing is. Uh, I'm a, uh, boy. Um, but uh, Vernon, my, 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 my look. Like, you drive by on the way to LA nowadays. Yeah, know? my lo my lovely girlfriend uh, is now yeah. uh, is now a part of this, Melissa, uh, all right. and a supporter of the show. So yeah. I'll be in the background while all this stuff going uh, going. I might have to uh, start over. But all, all right. right, May eleventh, oh, yeah, nineteen thirty two. <laughs> this one's great. Eighth grader Joe Schultz Jr. <laughs> singles, swipes two bases, and scores as a pinch hitter in a Texas League game. Wow. The 14-year-old is the son of the manager and will become a second-string catcher in the major leagues. That is crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing in eighth grade? I was playing in a Texas League game. No big deal. Yeah. No big whoop. 
and, and later on, he became pretty well known because he was actually the manager of the Seattle Pilots for that one year back oh, in that's uh, right. 1969. That's right. It was that wasn't even mentioned anywhere on this, but you're absolutely. I'm not surprised because right. that's what he's most known for, and I know it because you know I I got to read Ball Four several years ago, which if you haven't had a chance to read that, that's that was like the book that opened up a lot of topics in baseball, you know, going behind the scenes, by everything. In fact, I'm having the sports first sports book that really went, you know, talking about stuff that no one ever talked about. Cause sports writers used to really keep hush hush things that were going on behind the scenes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Pounds and Budweiser. May- I think that's what it always said about Joe Schultz in the book. He loved to pound. Oh, that's Budweiser. right. <laughs> May 11th, 1950, a train strike forces many teams to fly to their next scheduled games. Traveling by air is still a rarity in the major leagues at this time, which is, you think about it now, it's like, you know, everything is, is planes, yeah. but back then they still used to go by train. So uh, it would make sense. I, actually, and it was, this was, uh, you know, like during the 50s was kind of like the, uh, the, the not the luxury time, but a, kind of a renaissance in flying. It was like seen as like really like uh, it's a big deal. People like dressed up and yeah, and uh, they had their best luggage and everything. It was actually kind of a, a romance with uh, flying. May eleventh, nineteen fifty. After fans boo him for misplaying a ball, Ted Williams makes an inappropriate gesture three times: <laughs> once to left, once to center, and once to right. To the Red Sox fans sitting in the outfield stands. Yeah. During during his next at bat, as the booing continues, the splendid splinter becomes the splendid spitter as Williams steps out of the box to spit at fans uh, oh to show God. his displeasure. Wow. So this is a quite a, a fall from grace uh, wow. because um, you know only a month earlier he was the cover boy on Time Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a difference uh, a month makes, wow. right? That's Crazy. something else. And he still played for a good several more seasons, if I remember right. I want to see he picked up in the late in like the mid to late fifties. Yep. And again, one of the greatest players ever. And another shame is that he's one of those guys where he lost like at least a couple of years because of World War II, you know. Right, right. He matches numbers after that, you know. Yep. That's that's a a, a great foreshadowing of uh, some other stuff oh, we're gonna be talking about later I, on. Not just coincidence. May eleventh, nineteen sixty-two. Mini Minoso. Oh I, th- I believe it's I, it's funny because it's always uh, it's, a lot of people say Minoso, but I think it's yeah, Minoso. I've always said it. Okay. Uh, s- suffers a fractured skull and breaks his wrist when he oh, runs into the left field wall chasing Duke Snyder's triple in the Cardinals' eight to five loss to L.A. at Bush Stadium. The St. Louis outfielder will return to the lineup in mid-July, only to have the a bone in his forearm broken when he is hit by a pitch by Craig Anderson of the Mets a month oh. later. I know. That is, that is, he did not have a, a good uh, stint with the Cardinals. That's for and heck, he might have been like 50 here. You know what I mean? I, exactly. I do. You know, played baseball forever, and he's gotten to the major leagues late. I didn't look up to see how old he was. I know he's come up before on the show. Well, I think he ended his career in 1980. Something like that. Yeah, that's what I was just like. Yeah. Nuts. Let's see how old he was. While you look that up, May 11th, 1972, after a promise, after promising the club would never trade him, the cash-strapped Giants send Willie Mays, the only remaining player that moved to the West Coast with the team, to New York, uh, the city where uh, he began he began his Hall of Fame career in 1951 for right-hander Charlie Williams and fifty thousand dollars cash. Oh wow! Horace Stoneham, owner of New York and San Francisco Giants from 1936 to 1976, unable to guarantee his aging superstar an income when the outfielder retired, extracts a promise from the Mets uh, that the uh, that will pay the Say Hey Kid. Fifty thousand dollars annually for the ten years after the Hall of Famer wow. stops playing. Yeah, wow. so that wow. I didn't realize that that was as uh, a big transition as it was. Yeah, I mean, but I'm guessing <clears throat> the Mets probably are like shoot, we bring Willie Mays in, he's a draw, you know. Even that, even at advanced age and going to the end of his career, because I mean, come on, he was a you know he was with the, the New York Giants for about seven or eight years before they left to go to San Francisco. Yeah, that's right. 
and then he went so he's essentially he's going back to new york yeah um you know and uh i guess i guess that season was was really miserable for him so yeah. wasn't as promising although he was probably a, a a good drop do you remember what year that mini minoso thing was 62 all right so he was uh 30 okay he was he was 36 all right sorry that he was older than that he was born in 1925 yeah. Yeah, but still, try to go back with something like that in your late thirties. Gosh, ugh, not pleasant. Yeah. Yes. May eleventh, nineteen ninety one. After a heckler calls him Joey, a oh. name he a name he dislikes, and makes reference to his problems with alcohol, Albert Bell responds by picking up a foul ball and nailing the offensive offender in the chest from fifteen feet away. Wow. Although oh, the fans God. clearly supported his action, the Indian outfielder is fined and suspended for one week. Now, who would have thought that this this young kid on the left would turn into uh, 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 just such a, a uh, well, I'll say, uh, let's see. Uh, I won't say ornery. I won't say, uh, well, abusive, obviously, early in his career. But uh, if you ever, we, we showed it before, the Fernando Vina, where he yep. took him out at second base. Uh, yeah. He was intense. He was intense, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, but I love this, um, you know, Game Face Magazine cover. <laughs> and I'm glad at least it's after he changed his name. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yep. May 11th, 1993, in the top of the seventh of a tied game at Philadelphia's Veterans Stadium, Jay Bell, seen on the, uh, the left right there, yeah. uh, leads off the inning, grounding out to Philly shortstop Juan Bell, seen in the middle. The Pirate infielder is rung up by none other than first base empire, um, umpire Wally Bell. So oh, Jay wow. Bell to, to Juan Bell and called out by Wally Bell. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. I love the name game. Love the Bravo. name game. <laughs> I, I was only hoping that you were going to tell me that Joey Bell, I'm sorry, Albert Bell or George Bell is on deck. That would have been the best. Yeah, and it's it's funny because I, I didn't even put it two two, two together. Uh, yeah, like Albert I was Bell. Like, it's a different spelling. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Close enough. Yes. And if we can get away with it. Today, boys. Yes, right. <laughs> Ring that bell. Yep. You can ring my bell. Anita Baker. <laughs> That's for the disco machine. Thank you. You're welcome. May 11th, 1996. On John Franco Day, the New York veteran reliever is ejected from the game along with eight other players as a result of participating in a fifth inning bench clearing brawl at Shade Stadium. Prior to the game, the Mets celebrated the closer's recent 300th career save but his unavailability in the ninth leads to three hurlers combining to give up the tying runs in the eventual 76 walk-off victory over Chicago. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can only think of like, uh, you know, I, I thought that was awesome. That's, that's exactly the opposite of, I remember the, the Dodgers had Manny Ramirez day mm -hmm. um, and he didn't play, but he came and pinch hit and hit a grand slam. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm the first pitch, by the way. Yeah, cool. uh, I think that was like 2008 or 9. May 11th, 1998, striking out 13 Diamondbacks, Cubs Kerry Wood sets a major league record for strikeouts in consecutive games with 33 in two wow. games. So uh, before this, he obviously had his, uh, his 20 uh, strikeout game. The previous record for strikeouts, 32 in two starts, was held by, held by Louis Tiant. Uh, 1968 for the Indians, Nolan Ryan, 1974 for the Angels, Dwight Gooden, 84 for the Mets, and Randy Johnson, 97 for the Mariners. Uh, is someone we don't, uh, I, I want to ask, uh, Angelo, um, what do you remember? Uh, you must remember Kerry Wood because he yeah. probably was pretty big in, in the 90s when you were kind of watching. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the first thing that, that when you when you turn to that slide, is like, oh, Kerry Wood. There you um, go. And, and I do remember vividly. Uh oh. Oh, lost your audio. We lost your audio, Angelo. Oh, there you go. Nice yeah, back. Yeah, I remember the twenty strikeout game. I don't remember yeah. the thirteen strikeout game or so. Yeah. Well, it was uh I I don't what is it? hundred and three 
years ago today? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty bad with math today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. And it's a shame too because it's like he had he had such a bright future. It looked like ahead of him. Like the Cubs had some pretty bad luck with like with him and like a Mark Pryor. Like their arms just did not right. make right. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a, that's a very good comparison. Yeah, and even a guy like uh, well, I mean, not 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 to the certain extent, but obviously the injury, like Dave Derecki, you know, like or, you know, oh my there's gosh. another guy, there's another guy from Marlins who like threw his arm out too that I just saw recently that um, or was reminded of recently that I'm like, wow, you know, like a lot of these pitchers, they that used to be a big thing. They used to throw out their arms literally on the, on the mound, which was awful to see. Oh man, yeah. May 11th, 1999, for the first time this century, two opposing starting Major League pitchers with the same name face each other. The Rocky Southpaw, Bobby M. Jones, best right-hander, Bobby J. Jones, uh, and the Mets in the Coors Field Contest 8-5. to five. Uh, I have no recollection of either of these players. No. <laughs> and they made it just in time. They made it with, you know, six and a half months to spare. Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of someone that I don't know, but I think that we we should know because he is it's pretty awesome. May eleventh, two thousand, at the age of thirty seven, Joe Strong becomes the oldest pitcher to make his big league debut since pitcher. Uh, oh God, I'm not even gonna. Diomedes Olivo played for the Pirates in nineteen sixty as a forty one year old. Oh my God! The gosh. seasoned rookie <laughs> throws one and a third hitless innings. So um, if you if you read his card back here, it's like you know he had a pretty long minor league career. I think he even played in Mexico. Uh, uh, let's see, Taiwan, Korea, Mexico, Canada, and uh, yeah, good for him to make it to the major, major leagues. That's that's pretty cool. Hey, yeah, you know what you can say he made it. Yeah, yep. that's all uh, that matters. Uh, going with the Marlins again, May 11, 2003, due to a rash of recent injuries to the team's young stars, the Marlins, six games under 500, fire manager Jeff Torborg, criticized for his handling of the pitching staff. Veteran 72-year-old skipper Jack McKeon becomes the franchise six manager, posting a 75-49 and record for the remainder of the season en route to winning the National League pennant and beating the Yankees in six games to become the world champions. So uh, so whenever uh, I always, uh, for instance, I, I'll, I'll give you for instance, uh, you know, whenever you see like, you know, like this, when, when clubs fire a manager, you're like, why did they do it then? Or why did they do it this? Or why did they do anything like this? This is, uh, I'm surprised that they even salvaged this season, but they were so strong at the end. Uh, yeah. I remember like Josh Beckett, uh, was super strong yep. in that. Um, uh, they had a lot of great players. Uh, uh, I'm thinking uh, Miggy. Miguel Cabrera was great um, during that. He was still with them at that time. Uh, is that, am I right on that? Uh, 2003? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That sounds about right. I, I, yeah. I, I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot he was with the Marlins. Yeah, so they, yeah. I mean, they had a really, I mean, and then then they blew up that team again uh, as, they, as the Marlins do. Yeah, I was yeah. saying, like, they more or less tried to buy championships, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, they they did it, and they, they were super successful. But had, it, it was it was had, moves like this. I'll give you some names. They had Pudge. That's right. Uh, Brad Penny, Derek Lee. Um, yeah, Juan Pierre. I remember Juan Pierre. He was like a yeah, guy on there yes. forever. You know, but yeah, those are the main guys. Brad Penny. You know, good Brad solid. Penny, good yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, some great teams there. So that that's why they make these moves. You know, they yep. got to salvage seasons like this. May 11th, 2016, Max Scherzer ties a major league mark when he strikes out 20 batters. We just talked about someone who there you go. did 20 batters. So uh, Max Scherzer did it in a nine-inning game, joining Roger Clemens, Kerry Wood, and Randy Johnson as the only players who have done that. The 31-year-old right, right-hander who goes the distance in Washington's 3-2 victory over the Tigers at National Park has an opportunity to establish a new record with two out in the ninth, but James McCann grounds out uh, into a force out at second base to end the contest. So, uh, wow, he could have had even more uh, during that game. And uh, I think as recently as last start, he had like 13 strikeouts. So, boy, he is, he is an amazing, amazing pitcher. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah. So let me see if I can um, – let me see if I can start my cam – 
Hey. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna switch my cam here. See if I can. Okay. Uh, well, in the meantime, we can open up the first up. pack. You want to? Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's do that uh, real quick. Let me uh, go over here. <laughs> Boy, I am. Uh, this is the Muppet Show back here. My computer is like it, it's it's as much as having sparks coming out of it. <laughs> so this is baseball card pack wars. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll put my uh, uh, camera off if it probably heats up again. But um, these are the standings. Kevin, way out front, uh, but did lose some percentage points. Um, uh, but Kev- Kevin, uh, you did. Uh, you were. I was, I was 0 for what, I went what? 0 for 4. Yes, I did, sir. No, no, no. You went. You you had one win. You had one win. Uh, Angela last had one week? win, and I had two. Oh, yeah, last week. I, yeah. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I, 250 though. That that killed my average. Yes. Uh, so here are the baseball card pack wars rules. Uh, we'll walk you through it. We're looking for the high cards. Um, we're looking for relics and autographs. We're all gonna drink when we get that Brewers card. And uh, third Why round. Why do they regardless? I think he's gonna do the Cowboy Jack rule tonight. Oh my God. Boy, uh, big time. Uh, so uh, let's go to it. Let me um, let me do this really quickly. There we go. So why don't we go, Angela? Why don't you go first? All right. We'll start off with uh, opening why day. Is it not switching. There we go. Kevin, thank you for the tidbit on uh, Hangar Twenty Four. I did. I had no idea they opened in South County. Yeah, you're actually, welcome. It was so, good. I'm uh, like, good. I know a lot about them. I can kill some time while I wait for Michael to come back. Yeah, Ali, uh, Ali and I are going tomorrow, actually, after work. Oh, so. there you go. You said right. a on this while we're on the show here. <laughs> we got James Carnish, uh Justin Turner, Matt Chapman. It's, uh, it's our favorite rule. Trevor Bauer. Cowboy Jack's second favorite rule. Yeah. Cowboy Jack's favorite rule is the unwritten rule. There, there you right. go. <laughs> yep, there it is. Yo- Yohan Moncada. What? what? I'm not cheating. Caleb Smith. And running it out with the uh, Legends of Baseball oh, Greg right. Maddox. So, right. uh, guys, I'll tell you, this was nothing like my hot pack, in my last pack of uh, Bowman 2020 yesterday. So if yeah. you get a chance, go back to Monday Night Rip on Facebook to check that out. I pulled basically every top rookie from last season in the final pack. Uh, it was insane. And a number to 299 Christian Pache, That's Silver cool. Sparkle, which I have yet to find any eBay comps on. So I have wow. no idea the That's value cool. of that. So Nice. All right, Kevin, you're up. All right, hang on, because I, I, I've been accused of cheating. I feel like I need to do this. <laughs> I'm gonna pull a spare pack out of, of you know, I'm, I'm gonna pull like a card out. I'm gonna pull a number three hundred out of my back pocket here. Since apparently I'm a cheater now too, and as it is to being a, you know, very old man and whatever else I've been accused of over the years. When you live as long as I do, you get accused of a lot of things. All right, we got Yadier Molina. Kyle Sneger. We got a uh, rookie card here of Tristan McKenzie. Mike Clevenger. Nick Castellanos. Future stars of Dylan Cease. And Mr. Matt. Look at Mr. Matt. Wow. Put the mask on. That's good. Put your mask on. Where does he hook the, the straps? Yeah, exactly. I know. That's what I'm trying to figure out here because you can't really tell in the picture. Yeah, that's right. That's interesting. That's funny. There you go. But that was right. So while you guys get your high cards, I'm going to go for my opening day. Seven cards here, starting with uh, Steven Strasburg, the other Nationals pitcher. <laughs> I think he's on the DL. Uh, let's see. Gosh, I don't even know this guy. James Karachak? I think they yeah, got, got him. Too. I, I got that one. No, yep. I was gonna say you got that All one right, too. What's next? Next card. Justin Turner. Yep, got it. Oh. All right. Uh, Justin Zayas. Verlander. Nope. Nope. Uh, Starling Marte. Uh, we got Alex Bohm. Nice. And uh, Legends of Baseball, Randy Johnson. All right. All right, Kevin. What's your high card? 
Oh, was I first? I was second, but okay, I'll just go. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, Mike Clevenger, 216. 216. Angelo? Um, all right. I have uh, Yoan Moncada, 202. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I got ball. 209 as my high card. Oh, there you go, Mike. Uh, I got to get back to 500. All right. I'm working <sighs> on it. All right. Uh, I, since I showed up at the end of the show, what's next? <laughs> Are we doing oh, uh, Heritage we doing Heritage? 2020 Heritage, yeah. 2021 Heritage. Okay, I just want to make sure I thought so, but I didn't want to just grab a pack and start opening it and not see this. All right, let's get some brewers here. Oh, yeah, sorry. For real. I, I pulled this back out of my back pocket here, and I'm going to rub some sandpaper on it, get it all nice and greased up. Let's get some winners here. All right, we're starting off here with the 2020 AL ERA leaders. This would be Shane Bieber. Uh, Dustin Keiko and Chris Bassett. Okay. Mike Yastrzemski in action. We got you, Darvish. Another Mike Yastrzemski. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. There we go. And, wow, this is the Giants pack. So here we go. Mauricio Dubon. It's because if sports cards is tuning in. That's yeah, why. I know. It, I, it, it, yes. I think the mode is going this way. Uh, we have Mets, future, Mets rookie stars, David Peterson and Andres Jimenez. Stick with the Mets. We got uh, Brandon Nimmo. Another giant. I didn't even know this guy was on the Giants. Justin Smoke. I, I, oh, wow. I'm going to the Mariner. I'm like, yeah, when do you go to them? And closing it out, Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sports cards, yes. yes. Yeah, I was Definitely. all over the place there. All right, Angelo, why don't you go? All right, here we go. Heritage Baseball. These cards are so cool. All right, Marco Gonzalez. We have a, a very up close shot of Kenley yes. Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> you can see his thoughts. Yeah. Uh, Miguel Cabrera. We just talked about Miggy. Mm -hmm. Trent Grissom. We have a 2020 World Series Game 4. Oh, man. <laughs> Was that the game with the crazy ending? Was that Game 4? Uh, it would game have five? to be based on the picture. I, that's what I was going to ask. That, that was insane. It's Tampa, the Bay crazy score, yeah, the Tampa Bay scored two in the bottom of the night there it is. to win 8-7. to seven. Yeah, guys, that was nuts. Yeah. Dylan Bundy. Didi Gregorius, Ryan Yarborough, and we have a uh, 2021 rookie stars from the Royals: Brady Singer and Nick Heath. All right, man, we're 0 for five so far. We need a brewer. Heck? Get that brewer. We're like past halfway here. Oh, no brewers. This is ridiculous. Austin Meadows. Uh, Correa walk off. Boo. Boo. Uh, rookie stars jersey. for the Cardinals: uh, Cody Whitley and uh, Ro Roel Ramirez. I it was... All right. Uh, so my camera will probably go out in about a few seconds. So oh. uh, rookie of the year award: uh, Dylan Moore. Michael Brantley, still no Brewers. Uh, if Sports Car, Johnny Cueto, who just came back. Uh, this guy went on the DL, uh, Dustin May. And That's Cardinals, true. Tyler O'Neill, who I dropped from my fantasy team because he's been non productive in the last two weeks. Wow. <laughs> wow, my camera's going out. Exactly. All right. Here we go. Oh, God. Am I going to get more heat? Brandon Nimmo, 440. Oh, jeez. Uh. Ah. Warriors 409. So 440 is what we're what we're looking for. And there it goes, my camera. F everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Let's say he's got, he's looking for the high card here. Look, for, come right. on, beat it, beat that. You can, you can still hear. You can still hear me, right? Yeah, I hear right. you. I I I've, <laughs> I've morphed into my girlfriend here. 368. <laughs> uh, hey, wait a second. Hey, wait. Oh, I'm right, cheating. I, cheating. Yeah, for real. Panicans. For real. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is this might be cheating if I, if <laughs> but uh, actually I have uh, Quato's 452. I have Dustin May three three four uh, four. Well, so Quato is what you need to be. Sorry, 340. Four 440. Right, so you you got, got it. it. Yeah, 452. Quato. You got it. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll keep yeah. this here. Uh, oh gosh, you're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, I'll be. I'll be right no. back. Oh, all right. So I guess we're gonna do. We'll do ninety one. Well, oh, I guess yeah. That's right. We're not gonna do the. Well, right, yeah. Go for it. Go ahead, Angelo. All right, I'll kick it off. And uh, for this round, it is low card that we're gonna be low doing. Low card. Yep. And I'll, and let's see how your gum's holding up. Uh, it's like, in, I'm not It's in four pieces. <laughs> Mine. I, I mean, this this feels like it's at least two. I haven't had a full piece out of these three packs. Thank you again to the Big Duke for uh, yeah, getting these to Duke. us. Thank you so much. This is our win. last one. So no more ninety ones after this week. All right, Brett Saberhagen. I got the 91 baseball checklist. Woo! Pasquale Perez. Oh, my goodness. That was quite the jacket there. Dude, those jackets are sick, dude. Yeah, that's some good satin. I had, a, I had a Giants one back in the day. Right on. Uh, Rosario Rodriguez. Mike Moore. Bill Babe. Scott Coolbaugh, Steve Finley. There we go. Finally, guy I heard of. Yep. Jose De Jesus, uh, Kevin Gross. Dude, no <laughs> Brewers, man. Wow. All right, Sam Horn. Here we go. Rock Reigns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, manager card. Uh, uh, Bob Rogers. That's Buck Rogers to you, sir. Yes, Bob Buck Rogers. <laughs> we got uh, Cubs Lance Dixon and Yankees Matt Noakes. No Brewers. Matt No Noakes was a Brewer, was a Yankee. That's weird. Yeah. All right, Kevin. You're up. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Low car. Oh, hold on. Let's see. My gum is in three pieces. So I don't know. Wow. We have that really bad diarrhea oh. again. Yikes. And Chano Park. Yeah, you have the Chano Park. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> Otis Nixon. Nice. White wine for Otis Nixon. Um, sorry. Oh, Craig Leppert. Donnie Hill from the Angels. From the Mets, Tom O'Malley. From the Mariners, Gene Harris. From the Braves, Marty Clary. Hey, finally someone we all know. From the, from the Mariners, Tino Martinez. There you go. There you go. Remember him? It's all clear. For uh, Ed watching out there, from the Cubs, Joe Girardi. Nice. Instant win game. From the Astros, there, this guy, Ken Oberkfell. Yes, I, know, my, I do. Remember him. Former Brave, former Cardinal. Yep. Uh, former Rookie of the Year, Jerome Walton from the Cubs. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We talked about him on the show before. Ellis Burks. Heck yeah, of an underrated ball player there. Yes. Got some great numbers. From the Angels, uh, John uh, Orton. Mickey Morandini. Former Olympian, I believe. Uh, Tim Sherrill from the Cardinals. And Todd Bezinger from the Reds. No Brewers! Come on! No Brewers, that's ridiculous. God, it's up, it's, it's up to you, today. Michael. All right. 452. There, uh, just all right, to be thank honest. you. Uh, honest, Dave. So, you know, we all should have done Rule 8 today. We all should have done the unwritten rule. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mark Icorn. Uh, Angels. Yeah. Good sidearm pitcher. Andres Thomas. Braves. Uh, Ron Robinson. Hey, Brewer! Hey! Finally! Hey! Oh, my God. Yeah, they, they, that, that logo throws us off every time. All right. There you go, Bubble Pug. There's your Brewer. Yeah. Oh. That, the, that These, uh, I mean, the, the jersey is cool. It's all kind of reminiscent of what they kind of have today, but like, um, but uh, the gray version. Hey, Cowboy uh, Jack, I recommend 30-year-old gum and beer. Great combination. <laughs> Great combination. Uh, Pete Smith from the Braves. I remember him. Uh, Mark Parent, uh, another just kind of middle-of-the-road name uh, for the yep. Padres. Jeff Innes. 
Um, yeah, I got him. I got him. This, this is this is what I'm looking like uh, in the background when I'm when my camera's <laughs> off. My camera's going berserk. Uh, Lloyd Mosby. I don't remember him being on the Tigers. Uh, yeah, I remember him uh, for the Blue Jays, right? Blue Jays. Yeah, very good player in the, for several yeah. years there. Sweeps sweepstakes card. Uh, Scott Fletcher for the White Sox. Uh, Jeff Ballard, uh, one of the lost Ballard brothers. <laughs> Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> does not have the glasses though. Oh uh, Jeff King for the Pirates. Oh, this is a good one. There's my Cardinal Vince Coleman. There you go. That's a good one. Uh, another. Oh, one of the most underrated Cardinals of all time, Ray Langford. Oh yes. my goodness! There you go. Yeah, good solid player there. Uh, Angels. Um, Lee Stevens looking like a, having a hard day in the field. <laughs> really nice guy. I met him yeah. a few times. Met him a couple times. When he, when he's oh, is that right? Night. Yeah. Uh, Tim Burke and Hall of Famer ended off uh, in a good way. Tom Glavin. All right. Nice. That Heck, works. that might be a rookie. Oh, uh, we'll have to check that out. That's got to be pretty close. Uh, who went first? Uh, I did. Angelo went first. Angelo went over. Let go for it. Lance Dixon, 114 is my. Oh, my player. gosh. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. I laugh because I almost wish this was high card because I had a high card of seven six nine. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, how many cards are in this set? But uh, my low card is Donnie Hill thirty six. That's gonna be, that might be tough. Because as you saw, there's almost eight hundred cards in this set. So um, of course, I was looking at high card. I'm like seven eighty five. I'm a, I'm the big winner. Uh, but hey, we're going low, we're going low card. card. Here I was thinking, you know, 769 was, was high. But 36 is the low 36. card. 36. Oh, my gosh. My Tom Glavin, yeah. which is uh, actually he started – it says here started in 87. Uh, really? Okay. Chipper Jones is the 91 rookie. Oh, okay. All right. 87, 88, 89, 90. Yeah, so he, he'd been here okay. for a while. Uh, 82. Gosh, I remember him. 82. He was just hitting this group then. So, uh, Kevin – you, hey, you three for four. Got to get Jeez. back up to that 500 mark that for Cowboy ridiculous. Jack. I, well, you made the rules, buddy. <laughs> I did, actually. I did. Um, I, I'm starting to lament these rules that I, that I make for you. Uh, you didn't make it for me. You made you it for our just, audience, not just for me. All right? That's true. Well, uh, you know, I hate to say, uh, we should actually come up with some other um, – some other things. Uh, I don't know. I make it. Uh, I, 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 we do. Um, but we should definitely make it interesting. Maybe have some uh, side betting as well. Uh, uh -oh. I have to figure that out. So let me, uh, right. let me share my screen. Bear with me for just a second. That's all right. Yeah. Cause you were going in and out there for a second. Right. But that looks good. So let's get to it. That. I don't know. Like I have no idea. This is this is uh, this has been a calamity. Thank you for uh, bearing with us and sticking with us through all this. I, I promise and I assure you, um, um, there uh, the spectrum people uh, will hear from me, and uh, we'll definitely have a better feed next next week. Uh, so let's do it. Let's do baseball trivia. We're gonna right. test your knowledge of baseball. Uh, this is from the 1986 Magic Motion baseball card, which I actually have right here. So I'm holding them in my hot hand. So, but I'm going to put them on the screen. First question is, and please in the chat, I wow. want you to uh, pick a, one of the four that I will show next. The National League record for game-winning RBIs is 13. Who holds it out of these four people? Juan Samuel, Daryl Strawberry, Gary Reedus. Or Bob Horner. Now, I picked this question because it was a part of this. I remember that in the 80s, for some reason, game-winning RBI was like a big deal. The fact that you yeah. actually, like in the bottom of the ninth, yep. you know, hit it. And um, that so the game-winning RBI. But it's, it's actually a stat that isn't um, really kept too much these days. And I actually had to look it up, and I didn't see anything. So they don't – they yeah. really don't – so hold it anymore. It, is this for in one year? Because it doesn't really say that in the question. So this is um, 
Uh, That's what I'm assuming because it just it just said you know I was like I, I was at all time I'm just assuming uh, yeah I I mean for, I mean as a rookie as a so rookie I guess, okay I think it had to be a rookie thing it yeah. didn't say the question that's why yeah, I wanted so to these are all rookie stats right uh, this one's for uh, National League yes. record for game winning RBIs as a rookie all right yeah woo all right yeah hmm. hmm. My initial thought was Daryl Strawberry, but I feel that's too obvious of an answer based on the multiple choice. So I'll go with my, I'm going to go against my gut or my initial instinct and go, <laughs> excuse me, Bob Horner. <laughs> Bob Horner on the hot corner. Yep. You know, as they would say back in the TBS days. So, gosh. See, my, my gut also told me Daryl Strawberry. And I'm like, do I go with my gut or do I go with who was out thinking? Because I was thinking, I'm, God, this is tough. You know what? I'll go with Daryl Strawberry. I'll go with my gut. I know it seems almost too obvious, but he had a heck of a start to his career in 83. All right. And, so, uh, you know, what, who are people saying in the comments, Michael? <laughs> Yeah, so Bubble Pug says uh, Daryl Strawberry uh, got a Bob Horner got uh, John going with uh, his. Of course, Braves he's going to say that he's a Braves right. fan. Dirty Bob Horner from Arizona State as well. Oh, right on. That's right. Come on, no one's going for Gary Reedus. Um, Come on. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank, thank you, Ed. Calling in the ring for sure. Uh, oh, we do have a couple. Yeah, Gary, right, Gary right, Reedus. That's right, right on. yeah, that's all, totally. Uh, going with uh, oh, good. I'll say we have a guest for everybody. Good, we have people going for all four. Yep, and uh, Colin, I'm gonna go for one uh, Samuel well if so... I didn't go for Daryl. No, I'll go with Daryl. All right, so oh, the answer wow. is Juan Neil Samuel. Sportstock. Nailed yeah, it, Juan Samuel. Had uh, 13 game-winning RBIs in 1984. So, um, yeah, Juan Samuel is pretty big in this set. So Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, well, this is when he was at his peak, was it 8-5-8-6? He had about a good five a stretch, red. and that was it. I don't know what happened. He got the good, he got the stuff he was on or what? I don't know. Yep. All right. So hopefully I'm still with you. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm on my, I'm on my, on my hot spot, and it says that. So, um, I can hear you, Michael. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, we can hear you loud. Insane. Play. Okay, okay, okay. Good enough. Um, what wow. rookie had two triples and had two singles in his very first major league baseball game? Wow. Your choices are Bob Neiman, Bert Campanaris, Jackie Robinson, or Willie McCovey. Hmm. Ba -da 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 -da. So I have no idea who Bob Neiman is. Okay, I was gonna say I, I I don't even know, and I've been around for over a century. So <laughs> I'm gonna go you with know. Bert Campanaris. Nice. This is a straight. This is a straight guess. Straight, straight guess. guess. Yeah, good solid player. I mean, everything's. T I, gosh, you'd think I'd remember those Jackie Robinson. You'd think I would remember that being his first game, getting yeah. that that many hits. The only one I didn't think it was is William McCovey because I know of him being more of a power hitter, okay, like because he had over 500 home runs. So I couldn't imagine getting two triples in a game here. But you know what? I'll go with Jackie Robinson just to be different from Angelo. Okay. Angelo uh -huh. might be right, though. Or is this the only reason why we should know Bob Neiman is? Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. So a Bubble Pug uh, says Bob Neiman, uh, Cowboy Jack, <laughs> Willie Mac McCovey. Uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ed's going with uh, Bert Campy Campanaris. Actually, I, was he the one? I think I think he threw uh, he like tossed a, uh, the bat at a, at like was a Juan Marshall I think or Vita, no no Vita. you're thinking of Johnny Roseboro I think is what you're thinking of the one who he like he like over like threw the bat like this I think oh, it, I, th that. I think it is Bert Campanaris because I remember but him being I an think, A if I remember right Bert Campanaris did something amazing he played all nine positions in one That's game right. That's right he did that though Yep. Uh, Willie McCovey uh, with for Chad M. Uh, John going with uh, Campanaris. Uh, Colin with uh, Jackie Robinson. 
uh, all good guesses. Nobody's have a, a definitive answer. Uh, the answer is Willie McCovey. Oh, wow. The one right. I didn't think it was. Wow. Willie McCovey, uh, who had four hits in his first game in 1959, batted 354 in 52 games that season. Um, now, I, I was really happy that I found this picture. Uh, this is Willie McCovey early in his career. So the uh, San Francisco Giants uh, used to do spring training in uh, Phoenix. This mm -hmm. is Phoenix Municipal Stadium. It's right, oh, across, right, from, on. right across from the zoo. Uh, this yep. is uh, right here is actually uh, where I was a bat boy for the Phoenix Giants. If you look to the right, that's where the dugout is. And uh, the Arizona State Sun Devils play there uh, now. That stadium is now oh, okay. it's still there. Right on. Uh, but wow, uh, I still you'll, you'll see you'll see a lot of these old pictures of um, well the the Giants uh, were in Phoenix uh, the Mariners were uh, the Mariners and Angels no the Angels were were in like Palm Springs and, right. and other places and then um, but there's always pictures of like the Mariners that they're in Tempe and stuff like that so like baseball in, in Arizona has been there for a long time but I remember because this this uh, that that overhang. That kind of goes yeah. up and down uh, like that is very distinguishable. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was yeah. super. I'm just cool. curious how long, like when spring training started in Arizona, because you know the Padres weren't even around in this, you know, until later, and neither were the Angels. So I was like, who else is coming to the Arizona? Because I don't know when the Cubs started going out there. Because <clears> like the Cubs, the, the Cubs Brewer. have been out there for a long time. They they yeah. they were out there. Yeah, I think. So. But yeah, because we saw. Uh, I thought we saw, like. Uh, I we didn't. Did we see Ernie Banks out there? We also have to, have to check that out. Actually, that's yeah. that's a very good question. And then the Padres did. I think they played like in Tucson as well. So no, you a lot of stuff in the Padres yeah, Yuma, were in Tucson, Yuma Tucson, right? Yeah, it was Tucson it was, was the Indians. I married the Indians because no, you watch Major Indians League are. in the beginning. They are at <laughs> High Corporate Field for the spring training scenes. They're that's in right. That's right. And uh, and the Brewers used to play like in Chandler. I think it was. Um, so yeah, so super cool. Um, actually, uh, if you look in that 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 guy behind him is actually Juan Marichal. Oh wow! Yeah, there number twenty-seven. Yep. All right, so it has been a up and down uh, uh, episode for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but we did want to make mention of somebody uh, who passed away last week, uh, Del Crandall, who was the last surviving member of the Boston Braves. Uh, died at 91. Uh, he was a four-time Gold Glove winner who appeared in 11 All-Star games over eight seasons. Uh, he played in uh, each of the two All-Star games that were held uh, during 1959, 1960, and 1962 seasons. So we talked about that, there being two All-Star games. So yeah. he played in all of them. Uh, 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 further research... Um, uh, he was actually kind of uh, kind of a big deal for the uh, uh, Milwaukee Braves, um, but but he played for the Boston Braves as well. So that that was very unique. So he played for the Boston Braves in forty nine and fifty, Milwaukee Braves fifty through sixty three, the Giants in sixty four, Pirates sixty five, uh, Cleveland Indians sixty six, and he didn't play in fifty one and fifty two because of military service. Oh wow! So another uh, military veteran uh, that yeah. uh, had his uh, career cut short a bit, um, had a career batting average of 254, 179 homers, 657 RBIs, uh, led all catchers in fielding percentage four times and threw out most of potential base dealers of any NL catcher in five seasons. So, wow. um, yeah, quite a big deal. I, I love pictures like this because, I oh, mean, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, Eddie Matthews and Hank Aaron. I mean, he's right in there with them. Um, but uh, we were we were talking. We actually, uh, Kevin and I know him more. Um, uh, I know him uh, as a manager of the Albuquerque Dukes back in kind of like I think it was it was after Lasorda. Um, I th I believe it was, it was after Lasorda. Um, but yeah, but he was, uh, it was like PCL manager of the year. Um, but, but he's also, uh, he also managed the class a San Bernardino stampede. I didn't wow, wasn't even aware that they even had a team. <laughs> that's later because, um, they, that's, I think that's around the time they moved the ballpark where Inland empire is playing now. Cause mm. they used to have a field on the other side of San Bernardino called the San Bernardino spirit. And that's where actually Ken Griffey jr. Played in when he was coming up the ranks. Right. And that was like, an, obviously, I mean, 
he was a he was already a phenom even then in '88 when he was. Parents came straight out of high school, played a year there, and he started in '89 with the team. You know, to come up that quick, obviously, you know, and yeah, wow, the Stampede. That was a name. I don't remember when that name was. It might have been around the time we wrestled in the parking lot of that place, Michael. Oh, you're you're probably right on that. I think yeah. they were the Stampede around that time. I think there were. I think it, it says '95 to '97. It was right after it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to say Dodgers affiliate, and that's what the Dukes were too. Obviously, we found out too. We actually managed the uh, the Mariners um in like, i think 83 and 84 so he had major league managerial experience as well oh oh it's just oh look at us all right oh, it's just us kids it's just us look at this now and the last thing i was gonna tell Dale crandall is i was like oh it's interesting too because at least for us he was actually from ontario and he actually lived in your neck of the woods angel he actually was living in mission viejo when he passed away oh so wow. a local guy as well lived and spent his whole life in southern california well that's awesome well rest in peace yeah Cheers okay. to him. Cheers to you. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of the Beer Baseball Blog. Uh, yep. As Michael joins us back. Yes. I was, was going to say, I'm like, my, Angel Trinidad, do you have anything you want to plug? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, Go Michael. We got this. You don't need me today. My so computer, yeah, we yeah. have to end it at some point. My computer is going to be you across the switch. hall in a minute. You have the you switch. Have you got to pull the plug it. on us. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, uh, yesterday I did Monday Night Rip for the first time on the Beer Baseball blog Facebook. I opened a blaster box of 2020 Bowman, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, don't forget to tune in each and every Saturday to our YouTube channel for a new episode of Beer and Break with Angelo. And uh, I'll be uh, attending this Friday the Nashville Sounds versus the Memphis Redbirds in Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, be on the lookout for an upcoming vlog of that experience featuring uh, Big Teach 45. So we're heading out to Nashville for his bachelor party this weekend. And uh, I'm trying to throw one hell of a party for my uh, best bud. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we'll have a great time. Uh, Nashville's awesome. a great town. You'll have fun. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, Stay do you have anything you're going to plug? I mean, oh, you know, I, I, I want to make sure I mention this. If you need good jokes, be sure to email uh, jokelandaor.com. <laughs> it's going to be a weekly bit now, folks, so just get That's used to amazing. it. Yes. You know, or just look up, you know, Jackie Martley on Cameo. If you want some good jokes, you saw his material, you know. Yes. I will plug Jackie Martling every week. Otherwise, yes. I'll say every week. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lock and Lowell, L-O-K-N-L-O-L-L. And support your local brewery, especially this week. It's American Craft Beer Week. Let's all enjoy some good craft beer. And be sure to support your local baseball team if you have one, your minor league team, ideally. Thank you, guys. Yeah. it's uh, Thank you so much for bearing with us. Uh, we'll definitely, I, I'll definitely have a better show next time. I, I hope you enjoyed it, though. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next uh, Tuesday with another Beer Baseball broadcast. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Good night. <laughs>